What's up everyone, Laconde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s. In a previous video, I spoke about how to secure the ingress gateway of your Istio service mesh. But once you've secured the entry point, we need to consider how we're going to secure the traffic between the different services in our application. And there are different approaches that we can take to address the attack vectors in service-to-service -service communication, but in this video, I want to focus on authentication and encryption using Mutual Transport Layer Security, or better known as MTLS. MTLS is going to help us validate the sender of any request in our application network environment, as well as help us conceal it from being understandable to any other party that might wrongly intercept it. Let's take a step back and start by talking about authentication. Authentication is all about proving a client or server's identity with some kind of verifiable information, whether it's a password, certificate, or some unique characteristic but it's very important for this unique information to be verifiable by some other trusted entity or third party that can validate or prove its issuance. It's really similar to real life scenarios. If someone asked you for your ID, you wouldn't simply whip out any random piece of paper that has your name and a scribbled drawing of your face on it. I mean, look, you could try it, but it probably won't go so well, especially if you're required to provide something official that proves that it was issued by a trusted authority. It works the same way in this context. If there's a request from, let's say, the orders microservice to the products microservice, we want the Envoy proxy for the products microservice to intercept the request and basically say, hey, let me see some ID to prove that it's really coming from orders and not some fake service trying to sniff out data from the product service. So how does this work in Istio? How do our microservices get assigned or issued a verifiable identity and who or what is the issuing authority? Istio is the issuing authority and it uses the secure production identity framework for everyone, commonly known as Spiffy. Istio uses Spiffy to issue out identities to each service in the mesh so that they can mutually authenticate. A Spiffy identity is a URI with a particular format that consists of two important components, a trust domain and a path. The trust domain in the URI represents the organization or entity that issues the IDs and the path in the URI uniquely identifies a workload. Now, generally in Kubernetes, workloads are identified by service accounts. If you don't specify one, Kubernetes will assign the default service account to your workload. But how does that tie back to the Spiffy identity? Well, Istio will use the service account to update the path in the Spiffy identity. And that's the authentication. But where does encryption fit into all of this? I'm glad you asked. The Spiffy identity is encoded in a certificate known as a Spiffy Verifiable Identity Document, or SVID. The SVID, or certificate, is then used to encrypt the traffic and transit between the communicating services. We can implement this at different levels depending on the use case, and we would use the peer authentication Istio resource, which will be what we use for applying mutual authentication for different scopes. You can apply it to the scope of the whole mesh, which will enforce the security measure for every workload in the mesh, or you can apply it to the scope of a given namespace, which will enforce MTLS for every workload in a given namespace in the mesh. And lastly, you can apply it to specific workloads, which will enforce MTLS to every workload that is identified by the specific selector. All right, so my cluster is up and I've already deployed my two go-to example applications. One is the mock e-commerce app, which consists of orders, products, and GraphQL microservices. And the other app is the Express Test application, which is a basic Node.js app. Now, the mock e-commerce app is running in the e-commerce namespace, and it is also part of the Istio service mesh. The, e the Express Test application, on the other hand, is running in the default namespace, and it is not part of the mesh. So the ones that are part of the mesh, as you'd expect, each have the sidecar proxy running alongside the respective pods. I only have one replica for each of these services, but if I was to click on one of them, I'm gonna check on products, you'll see over here, the containers running inside of this particular pod. We did have the Istio init container, but what I want you to see is the Istio proxy over there, which is my sidecar proxy running inside of the pod. And that's the case for the two other services as well. Now, what I want to demonstrate um, is how you can control the measure of strictness for peer authentication with MTLS and what the resources should look like in order to apply this for different scopes. And we're gonna do this uh, for the mesh. I'm also gonna demonstrate um, 
what the, the resource should look like for namespace, uh, what it should look like for a particular workload, and how you can also override a mesh-wide policy with a specific workload policy. And I won't necessarily apply each one of these to the cluster. I want you to understand what the resource should look like in terms of the different properties that need to be applied. Um, I will make use of some of them to actually show you what it would look like with, it, with applications running inside of your cluster. Now, there are two modes of strictness for MTLS, permissive and strict. The permissive mode uh, configures your sidecar proxies to allow both HTTP and HTTPS traffic, whereas strict mode, as the name implies, configures the proxies to only accept HTTPS traffic. Now, by default, Istio has MTLS automatically enabled for all of the sidecar proxies. However, they're set to permissive mode, which will allow applications outside the mesh to successfully make requests with HTTP traffic. Now, let's start off by looking at this mesh-wide policy. It's going to enforce a strict mesh-wide policy for MTLS peer authentication. You'll notice under the mode here for the particular MTLS property, I have set it to strict. So this is going to prevent any communication from sources that do not have a verifiable identity attached to them that Istio recognizes and trusts. Now remember, Istio already automatically enables MTLS. So, so this will just make it strict, unlike the default permissive setting. Now, um, let's look at some of the other properties over here. And so this is a custom resource definition um, for Istio. However, the properties should look familiar to you. I'm sure you can see the API version, kind metadata, and spec. These are uh, universal to the other Kubernetes resources. So the name property um, is still an arbitrary value. However, um, it's good practice to name it default because you should only have one of these and make sure that it runs in the namespace where your Istio core resources are. So the Istio system namespace. Now you have to be careful if you're going to apply this mesh wide policy because it's a bit drastic and can have a major impact on your cluster, especially if you have a lot of workloads that communicate and only some of them are ready to be part of the mesh, whereas others aren't. As you'd expect, it can lead to lots of failures and breaks in communication. So the important thing is to remember to plan properly and consider what the implications of such an action would be. So this is the mesh-wide policy. And as you can see, the main things to remember from here are uh, the kind, which is peer authentication for any of these um, MTLS properties uh, that you, in these MTLS policies that you intend to apply, as well as consider under the spec configuration what the MTLS mode is. Now let's look at um, the namespace wide policy. So you can also apply an MTLS policy for the scope of a specific namespace. And if you deploy this policy outside of the Istio system namespace, it will govern the MTLS strictness for the specified namespace. So as you can see over here, there's not much of a difference from the mesh wide policy in terms of what the resource actually, the manifest file actually looks like. But the difference is because it's not being applied to the Istio system namespace, it's instead it's being applied to the e-commerce namespace. Whatever I set is what is going to govern or determine how peer authentication um, or MTLS works in that particular namespace. And of course, if I was to set this to permissive, then it would override and apply that for that particular namespace. All right, next is the workload wide policy. So if you want to apply a policy for a specific workload, all you would do is add the selector property, as you can see over here, and match the label to the workload that you want to set the MTLS configuration for. Again, it doesn't look very, it doesn't look that different from the two previous manifests that I've displayed for the other um, the other scopes. However, what is different is the selector over here, as you can see, and this is for any workloads that match the particular label workload e-commerce. So even if I have the mesh wide policy applied, if I was to deploy the workload uh, policy, this would override that particular setting for this specific workload. So those are the main things that you, those are, these are the main scopes that you need to be aware of. It is the mesh wide policy. It is the namespace policy and a workload policy. Now, if you're wondering what this last one is over here, oops, I think I just closed it. Let me open that up. 
So this is also a workload policy. As you can see, the selector is set over here. But this is the this is one that I'm actually going to use to demonstrate how you can override a mesh-wide policy for a particular workload if you want to allow communication uh, from sources that aren't uh, that don't have a verifiable identity in Istio's eyes. So let's uh, let's let's switch over to that. All right. I'm back in K9S, and the first thing that I want to do is to show you the peer authentication resources that I have created at this point. And you can see the only one that I have is the mesh-wide policy. So if I was to describe that, you'll see that it matches the different properties that I set. As you can see, the mode is strict and that it's running inside of the Istio system namespace. We can also see that from the general view. Uh, this is the one that I demonstrated inside of VS Code. So this is what has been applied. Now, let's see what the implications of this would be in terms of communication inside of my cluster. I'm gonna go back to pods. And what I wanna do is I wanna attempt to establish some communication between the express test application and any one of these services. So I'm going to go inside the express test container. And now I'm going to make a request to orders and products. And let's see if that's going to produce anything. Let's stick to products because I'm going to use a policy that will override that mesh wide policy specifically for products. Now, as you can see that that the connection re has been reset by the peer that was an immediate rejection um the express test application is not allowed to communicate with products and this is because of mtls that is the mtls setting uh, for the particular mesh and if i was to try this with orders as well it would be the exact same response You can see I'm getting the same response over here. So I'm going to clear this. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come back to VS Code just so you can see and you can get another view of this policy that I'm going to use. So this is named product permissive, and I'm going to change the MTLS mode to permissive specifically for the product's workload. So you can see over here the label app products, and this is attached to the products, um, the products pod. So First thing I need to do is come over here. So this is the same directory for what you're seeing inside of VS Code. I'm just going to hit an ls command just so you can see it over there. Products peer auth. And I'm going to proceed to create it. Great. So that's been created. And uh, now I'm going to run the exact same command for products. And let's see what the implications of that will be. And as you can see, now there is successful communication. So if I was to hit the ls command over here, you'll see that I actually got I have products over there now, and I can just run a cat command on that. And there's the response. You can see um, I've got feedback, and this is what the products endpoint um, would give me. I can see different products listed over here. So there's an example of how you can apply a mesh-wide policy and you can see what the implications of it are and how you can also override MTLS for a specific workload and what the implications of that would be in terms of communication between the different services. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more.